Afternoon all. Here's a stepper motor tester that I made many, many years ago. Oh, it must have been 1998, 97 thereabouts. And it's based upon part number EDE1200 Unipolar Stepper Motor IC. And that IC is made by E-Lab Digital Engineering Inc. E-Lab Digital Engineering Inc. Now, they wrote the code that goes into the microcontroller. And they named it EDE1200, Unipolar Stepper Motor IC. Now, at the end of the video, I'll show you the circuit. So you can build your own. But let's go ahead and hook it up and test it. Let me find my motor wire colors. That's this sheet right here. We're going to connect the red wire to phase C, the blue wire to phase D, and in between the black wire, in between these two coils, the black wire to plus 12 volts DC, this external plus 12 volts DC. We're going to connect the brown wire of the stepper motor to phase A, the yellow wire to phase B, and the white wire to that same plus 12 volts DC. This is, this is my motor right here that we're going to connect. Now, we apply 8 volts DC and ground, logic ground, to these two terminals right here. And that will power up that ED E1200 and the optocouplers and the NE555. Here are the phases, phase A, phase B, VS, which we're going to connect to 12 volts DC, phase C, and phase D. And then we will run that motor. I'll get some hookup wires here. Let's hook up 8 volts DC first. That goes here. And ground to the logic ground terminal. I'm using screws. At that time when I made this, screws were easier to, to, uh, to connect. Supply plus 12 to the VS terminal and that same plus 12 we're going to connect to the white and black wires right here. We'll just join the two right there and we'll try to clamp down on both of them at the same time. I might have to. Come on now. Now I'm going to have to use two separate wires. That's fine. I can do that. Okay. Let's connect phase A to the brown wire. Connect phase B to the yellow wire. It's not short out. Keep everybody separate. We'll connect phase C to the red wire. Then we shall connect. Phase D to the blue wire. They're all in wires. <laughs> okay, I think that's got everybody. We get a little bit of 
electrical tape. I'll attach this to the top of the motor and you can see it spin. There we go. Let's connect our 12 volt ground to VS ground. Look at that. <laughs> Runs pretty quick. Isn't that fascinating? Let's go the other way. Alright all, here we are at the house. It's a little bit chilly outside. <laughs> so, we're going to discuss this circuit right here based around the EDE1200 unipolar stepper motor IC. Now, I built the stepper motor tester with this IC right here controlling the step and direction of a stepper motor. I had to test a stepper motor so I built a little circuit. Uh, in these circles right here are my screw terminals VS which we connected to plus 12 volts DC and VS ground of that uh, external 12 volts DC connected to the VS ground screw. The stepper motor was connected to the phase A, phase B, phase C, and phase D screw terminals with jumper wires. Now here I've drawn in that stepper motor so that the brown wire was connected to phase A the yellow wire was connected to the phase B screw. Here's the phase A screw, phase B screw. And the white wire connected to the VS screw. The red wire connected to the phase C screw. The blue wire connected to the phase D screw. And the black wire also connected to the VS screw. In order to energize this coil inside the stepper motor we turn on this MOSFET right here this IRF 531 and current flows from plus 12 volts DC the external power supply through the white wire of the stepper motor through the brown wire of the stepper motor through the drain source junction of the IRF 531 to VS ground, the source ground of the external power supply. And that will energize that coil inside that stepper motor. Now, the same happens when this coil is turned on by this MOSFET being turned on. This coil is turned on when this MOSFET is turned on. This coil is turned on when this MOSFET is turned on. Now I've only drawn the optocoupler circuit 
that joins the output of the ED1200 to the gate of the MOSFET. I've only drawn it once. I didn't have enough room down here to fit it all in. And, uh, and, uh, uh, get it to fit in the movie camera screen so this 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 is all the same duplicated circuit four times when the output number one on pin 17 of the EDE 1200 IC is low current flows from the plus 5 volts DC of a MC7805 three terminal regulator current flows through the 220 ohm current limiting resistor we have to have that otherwise we'll burn up that LED inside that optocoupler current flows through the 220 ohm resistor through the anode cathode junction of the LED inside that optocoupler and back into that output. So with current flowing through this circuit photons are emitted into the base of that phototransistor driving it into saturation and now that plus 12 volts uh, power supply current flows from that power supply through the one kilo ohm resistor through the collector emitter junction into the gate of the IRF 531 causing it to go into conduction into saturation so that this coil current flows from the plus 12 volts DC through the windings inside that stepper motor through the drain source to ground voltage source ground now the purpose of this 10 kilo ohm resistor is that when the output of the TLP521-4 this output right here is turned off we're not in saturation that ensures that the gate is at zero volts and turned off uh, through this 10 kilo ohm resistor to VS ground the output in order to turn that uh, phototransistor off the output here output 1 on 17 must be high and so we have a high up here on pin 1 of plus 5 volts DC and we have a high out here on pin 2 of plus 5 volts DC so there's no current flow when this output is turned off. Now what's the purpose of the optocoupler? Well, it, it does two things. First, we have a level shift. This circuit over here is a plus 12 volts DC circuit on the output of that optocoupler. The EDE1200 is a 5 volt circuit. And we cannot drive this circuitry and this circuitry from the two different voltages. That's called voltage level shifting. We're shifting from 5 volts to 12 volts. The second purpose of the TLP521-4 optocoupler is to protect this IC. The EDE1200 is a 5 volt IC. 
if we had a short circuit out here, say for instance, uh, the I, if we didn't have the optocoupler between here and there, if we had a short circuit in one of these MOSFETs and it shot back up through the gate, we would be applying 12 volts DC to a 5 volt IC. <laughs> <laughs> and this IC would not survive. So, if we had a malfunction out here, that optocoupler separates the damage, the high voltage, which in our case is plus 12 volts DC. It separates that high voltage. Doesn't sound like much, does it? plus 12 volts DC but if you take that plus 12 volts DC and put it on a 5 volt IC that 5 volt IC does not survive <laughs> okay okay I'm getting a little long winded on this um, this circuit right here we're going to take a look at the control of the ED1200 in my homemade stepper motor driver box Okay, <laughs> we're back to this page again. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. What is the purpose of the 10K pull-up resistors? There would be one here, one here, and uh, tied to this point right here between the 10K and, and the S1 switch. A 10K resistor right here, uh, and tied in parallel with that switch and a 10k ohm resistor here tied to this position right here between the 10 kilo ohm and the S1 switch. So I have four resistors all joined to the drains and the S1 switch. Well, I wanted a way so that if I did not have a motor connected out here I could view the function of the square waves driving into the MOSFET gates on the output sides of the optocouplers. So when I have a stepper motor out here, I open that switch because this is our load. The coils of the stepper motor are the load, and we can look at the drain to source square waves across the coils of that stepper motor. But if I don't have a stepper motor out here, I can close that switch, and the 10 kilo ohm pull up resistors in the drain of the MOSFETs, the four MOSFETs, becomes our load, and we can look. To make sure that our stepper motor driver box is working. <laughs> okay. Now the purpose of the diodes is to protect the MOSFET. When we are switching a coil, an inductor, and that coil of wire inside the stepper motor is an inductor. When current flows through the coil of wire, it builds up a magnetic field. And when that, magnet, when that uh, magnetic field collapses because we turn this MOSFET off, it cuts across the windings of that coil and generates a very, very large voltage. And if we don't have this diode in here, that high voltage can come back in here and destroy this MOSFET. So we have to have that diode. And there's four of them. There's one here. And I didn't have no room to draw them all in. So there's one here. There's one here to 12 volts. And there's one here to 12 volts to protect the four MOSFETs. Okay.
There we go. We're done with that one. <laughs> I cut ahead of myself and I forgot to mention what all this is about. Now we can move to the controls of the EDE1200. Here is the direction circuit. When we apply a logic high or a logic low to pin 7, the direction pin, the stepper motor is commanded to move in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction. When the switch is open in the clockwise mode, we have plus 5 volts DC applied to pin 7 and the stepper motor moves clockwise. Now I didn't draw it in, I forgot to, but this is a 10k pull up right here. You could use a 1k, that would be fine. When we close the switch, then pin 7 becomes a logic 0. We connect pin 7 to ground and the stepper motor moves counterclockwise. Simple. Here, according to the data sheet for the EDE1200, we have to connect 3 and 4 and 14 to plus 5 volts DC. That's from an MC7805 voltage regulator inside the stepper motor driver box. Pin 5 of that IC is logic ground tied back to the ground of that MC7805. Now you'll see that 6, 8, and 10 are also tied up to plus 5 volts DC. Pin 6 is disable motor drivers. So pin 6 would be like your start and stop input. And Since I didn't need to uh, start and stop, I just tied it up to plus 5 volts. Pin 8 is half stepping or normal stepping. Now I said I didn't have to half step so I just tied pin 8 up to plus 5 volts DC for normal stepping. And pin 10 is step mode or run mode and I wanted to run in step mode. So I tied pin 10 up to 5 volts DC. Down here on pin 16 is oscillator 1 input and pin 15 is oscillator 2. That's no connection but I take oscillator 1 pin 16 uh, from this 4 megahertz clock. Pin 8 and 4 that's your VCC and ground of the clock and pin 5 is the output of the clock going into pin 16. Now for the step input. Here on pin 9 of the EDE1200 unipolar stepper motor IC is the step input. Now I wanted the ability to have an external frequency applied to the step input from a function generator or the step input applied from the output of an NE555 timer IC. So let's go up here first. We have an optocoupler again, and that separates the step input, which would be a 5 volt input, from me accidentally applying 12 volts <laughs> or 15 from the function generator into that IC and destroying it. So I have an optocoupler here that level shifts and protects that step input. When 
I apply a 5 volt square wave to the anode through the 220 ohm resistor to the anode of this optocoupler 4N36 and ground on the cathode side photons are emitted into the base of that phototransistor causing it to go into saturation and that applies zero volts at this point right here and we would have zero volts into this pin 9 when we have zero volts up here and zero volts down here ground of the function generator that LED is turned off and this phototransistor is no longer conducting and 5 volts DC is applied to this point right here through the 10 kilo ohm resistor and now we have 5 volts over here so we have a square wave in square wave here a square wave on the step input on pin 9 now if I want to use the NE555 set up in a stable mode of operation I flip this switch from external frequency to internal frequency and we use the NE555 square wave to drive into that pin 9 step input. I like this IC right here. This IC has been around for many many years at 555. Pin 7 is discharge. Pin 2 is the trigger. Pin 6 is the threshold. Pin 8 is VCC. Pin 4 is reset. Pin 1 is ground. And pin 5 is control. I should do a video just on that IC right here. That IC is a workhorse. You can do a lot of things with that. 5.55 timer I see.